Before this video starts, I'd like to let you guys know that I have a Discord channel specifically for these type of videos. If you go to the Hammer SDK or VSync, I will explain hopefully any of your guys' problems with VScript. Some of them I might not be able to help, but at least I can help you guys. So this is where you'd post any problems or any issues you face in Hammer. So let's get into the tutorial. Welcome back to the introduction to Squirrel programming. Today we'll learn what an array is and how to implement an array in Squirrel. What is an array? An impressive display or range of a particular type of thing. From this, we know that the array data type is a grouped data type where all elements in that array are the same type and it consists of elements accessed by using indexes. Array index it's a data structure that holds multiple elements in one variable. In a statically typed language, C language, and many others, an array is set to a fixed size and all the elements are required to be the same type throughout. In a dynamically typed language, like Squirrel and Python, a list is used instead of an array data type, as the list data type is flexible and is not restricted to which data type it holds. That's one of the advantages, but also one of its disadvantages. The code at the top is written in C Sharp, so we have to state the array that we want to work with, which is an array of integers. We have to specify how big the array is, so the max size would be 5. So this means that the max elements are 4. Now we have to assign a random object, which creates a random number. We have to implicity, implic implicity, we need to implicitly, impl we need to implicitly declare the random data type of a statically typed language. Now we will iterate over the loop with a random number between 0 to 100 as the maximum number and then we will write what number is in that index and the bottom from below and the code from below is from Python. So we're going to import the random module and we're going to specifically target the random range function so that means that we don't call all our functions that we don't need to insert into our program. Then we have to create an array which should be a list and we're going to call it R short for an array. Then we're going to iterate from a range of 5 so that would be 0 to 4 and then we're going to use the random range function to create a number between 0 to 100 maximum and then we can display the array in its entirety. Most languages don't allow multiple different types in a single array. This mostly applies to statically typed languages like the C language for example. It's used to group items together instead of managing multiple different types of variables and this is good for management for programming. The maximum element index is always one less than the length of the array. So remember the algebra equation n minus 1, where n is the length of the array. Each element points to a reference in memory. The downside of having a non-specific type array slash list is converting types to strings, integers, floats, can take up time depending on how complex the value is it has to convert it to. This is also dependent on how hard it is and how big it is. It's a bad practice in most cases, but this is due to program language dependent reasons, so it's always a good practice to use an array that has the same data type throughout. Here's an example of a squirrel array. We have a function at the top of the script to print out the array and now we will declare a global array scope in the program. Notice as we use the new slot operator because we need to add this to squirrel's root table to access this globally. Then we can append to the global array list. Then we print out the list. Notice the red arrow. That's what the array prints out. Then we're going to create a local array scope. This time we're going to use squirrel's array class. We're going to use an array constructor of three elements which are assigned null by default and when we print that out notice as it's null with the address in memory but remember it's not assigned to anything so we can't grab an address. And then the last one we use the array constructor again but this time we're going to make each element have this is cool in the array and notice as it prints out three times. One note is that this is done using an online compiler for the actual language itself. So we have to specify that you want to target squirrel's print function. So you don't need to use the global scope, which is the two column. Come on, okay, okay. I need to specify to target 
print which is done by two colons. You don't need to do this as Valve has already implemented this feature inside Squirrel itself. So you only need to use a double colon if you want to target a global function from a class. But you don't need to do this for FreeScript unless you have a function in the other class which has the same name. There's more than one type of an array. We currently worked with a 1D array but there's far more. There are two different multi-dimensional arrays. 2D arrays which is usually associated with a grid and it's commonly used for Excel and Access. Anything where there's columns and rows. There is a 3D array as well. Typically used for scoring systems but this can be used for more than just a scoring system depending on what you need the array to do. And we have a jagged array each different array has its advantages. Now 2D arrays are arrays within arrays. Squirrel doesn't support this natively, but you can still create them, but you need to do them an other way. A 2D array contains the following columns, how many fields, spaces they are available, and rows, how many of these columns are copied as separate indexes. So this example would be the following in C sharp, since C sharp supports 2D arrays natively. So we declare a 2D array in C sharp with a comma within the array bracket. Then after declaring it, you need to specify new int 5 for how many rows there are going to be and 2 for how many columns there is going to be for each row. In English terms, this represents a set of 5 elements where each element holds two items. So if we target array 0, 0, that is 5. And if we target array 0, 1, that is 2. Remember that the maximum length is always in takeaway 1. So to access row number 5, we have to specify row number 4. If you specify 5 in the index, you've gone over the maximum element, which can cause issues with the program. A 3D array is the same idea as a 2D array, but breadth is added, just like a 3D object. So breathe. Breath. Breadth. 12 minutes already. Lint like that. Breath. That. Breath. That. There we go. A 3D array has the same idea as a 2D array, but depth is added, just like a 3D object. This could be used for a race score system for this example. So each racer, 10 racers, does a lap 5 times. Each lap has 4 checkpoints. Record the time between checkpoints and laps. So in English terms, there's going to be 10 rows of 5 within each element in each column, there'll be an additional array of 4 to record the checkpoints. So, a 3D array is an array of arrays inside of an array. Quite fun. Here it is visualised. We have 10 rows to represent each racer, and for each row there are 5 columns. And for each of those 5 columns, there is a separate array called checkpoints, which holds 4 elements inside that. So for each row, there are 5 arrays, and each of of those five arrays contains an array of four. A jagged array is different from a multi-dimensional array, which is a 2D and 3D array, as its columns are not fixed to the same size. For this example, 10 pin bowling recording system. Yet again, for this example, I'll show you it using a C sharp jagged array, which C sharps supports natively. Yet again, Square does not support this natively, but you can still achieve this by using a different method. So for each row, the first one has only one column length because that's the first pin. The second row has a column length of two. This holds the second and the third pin. The third row contains three pins, so that has a column length of three, and that holds the fourth the fifth and the sixth pin. And the last row contains the last four pins, which are the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, and the tenth pin, which has a column length of four. A multi-dimensional array has a column size that is fixed throughout each row. So in a multi-dimensional array, you can't have different sizes of column lengths, because this is not how a multi-dimensional array works. But a jagged array is not restricted for how long each array is within its rows. So hopefully I made explaining arrays more easier to you. And now we're finally going to go into the good part. After this tutorial, we'll be learning object-oriented programming. But the next video is going to be implementing these features in Hammer itself.